she had a nasty attitude and I asked her I said well could you give me any information about my son she said what do you mean I said I received a call that my son was deceased I don't know what you're talking about that's exactly how she said it I don't know what you're talking about and so I told her I said well she said where did you get the call from I said never mind where I got the call from I said I received a call that my son was deceased well I don't know anything about it and then she said uh, I said so you can't tell me if my son is dead or alive she started saying she don't know what, what I'm talking about she said, I don't know what you're talking about and then she said if so the chapel will give you a call so we stood there and looked at us about two minutes and then we left about five minutes down the road five minutes down the road my phone rang it's the chapel he said can I speak to Linda Taylor I said this is her um, I was calling you to inform you that your son Antonio Taylor is deceased and um, he said do you claim his body I said yes I claim his body and I said well can you tell me how he died no I can't give you any information and that's all I heard from parchment from the chapel no one from this day have called me I haven't gotten a letter only thing I have is his death certificate and they saying that he hung himself that's not so because he have marks on his arms he has scratches on both of his arms he has bruises up and down his arms and he was in a one-man cell and if he hung himself that would not be on his body when you first heard not. the news just kind of describe how you felt like that's, you know, i was hurt that's really. my child he might not be nothing to nobody else but he's something to me he's mine he's mine and i want justice and and the video we have videos i have in the videos warden simon she's standing there while they bringing my son out of the two inmates bringing my son out of the cell dead in a sheet and she's standing up there with her foot up on the step looking at the inmates bringing him out the cell dead in a sheet and no one's and not and again no one to this day have contacted me from parchment i haven't heard anything anything did the sunflower county coroner agree with that ruling that's what they they have that on the death certificate i don't agree with it how old was how, 33. where were you all from Jasmine yes, city how long had he been there um about five about five years who was he sentenced to? burglary everybody's him everybody make mistakes i don't care what he was there for he's still mine and like i said they're saying that it's suicide he hung himself and then he also told me they have on the death certificate that he hung himself with a bed sheet. He told me he didn't even have a sheet or a mat. You mean a mattress? A mattress? Yeah. What? Whatever they sleep on in there. How it's long exactly. had he been? How long had he been going through that? Not having. Was he? Ever, ever since he been there. He hadn't had food and stuff like that. I'm not gonna say he didn't have food, but the food that he said that they were serving him, they were slop. Yeah. 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 It's slop. He used to tell me, Mom, you won't believe this, this food that they're feeding us. But I do not agree with them saying that he hung himself because it's, no. I don't, I don't agree with that because that's something that I know. And his brothers and sisters, his aunts and everybody else that know him, that's something that he would not do. I and the evidence... When you had talked to him? Um, I think it was on the 5th. Of December? Mm-hmm. I did think he, it was on the 5th. And he died December? The 8th. Mm -hmm. What are you hoping comes out of all of this? I want justice. I want justice and I want Warden Simon to pay too because she stood there and allowed these inmates to bring my son, which everybody knows no inmates were supposed to touch his body, period. I want her to pay too. Describe the type of person your son was for people who never met him. He was a good person. I mean, he was very outgoing, you know, and, and he was mine. I love him. Whether he's here or not, I love him. So he didn't have any down spirit, especially. No, no, no. That's why I said they could have saved that saying that he hung himself. No. Mm -mm. No. Was he in a gang? He was, but he said he had got out of it. Oh, man. That was like yeah. about two years ago. He said that he had got out of it. What was his gang affiliation? It don't matter. I, right. That, it, that don't matter. Anything that we didn't ask you that you want people to know? No, that's it. All right, next we have um, Chain of Being Prepper, the family of Antonio Taylor. We have, I believe, Diane Lewis, who is the relative of Larry Walker. Pretty much what I'm 
much like she was crazy. I'm sorry, could you hold on one sec? You might wait in one minute for us. And when you begin, just spell your first and last name. First name, Diane, as I said, D-I-A-N-E, last night, Lewis, L-E-W-I-S. As the lady was before was stating before me, the same thing happened to my son. They said he hung himself. On the day of November 19th, I get a text message. Parchment did not call me. The chaplain did not call me until later. I got a text message stating, Miss Diane, your son is dead. I'm a friend of his. He's been dead since about 4 a.m. this morning. He said to me that they stepped over his body and count him as if he was alive. We got proof he did not hang himself. We got proof he did not hang himself. And I hear all the questions you all were asking the lady before me. I'm like her. Regardless, they're affiliated or what? They're human. They're our kids. Our brother, our sisters are someone. We want justice. I want everyone in that place to know it's not okay to take a life as if you are God. It's not okay. They may not be loved by you all. They may give you all hell. So have us. They us. We the parents. We have put up with them longer than you all have. You throw them away and you talk about they animals, they dogs, they're not. It's what you make of them. No one have no right to take their life. My son did not hang himself. They called him Big Oso. He was affiliated. He did not hang himself. I could not go see his body. I get a call on my way home from the chapter, which was about 11 something, it was on lunch. I get a call from him telling me my son was dead. He asked to speak to my 11 year old son. I asked him why, to tell him, a 11 year old, my son is dead? I'm the mother, shouldn't you be telling me? He didn't even know who I was. He didn't even ask to speak to me. So yes, it's very hurtful. It's very hurtful. People had to pick me up in the bathroom floor at my job to help me. And I thank them for that. But I am hurt. I am torn apart. I cannot sleep at night. I keep the lights on. I wait on his call. Something I hear every day or every other day. I don't get that. And for you who have not lost a child, you don't know that feeling. You would never know that feeling. I pray you don't have to go through it. But we know who did this to him. We know. And I say, I pray for you all, but at the same time, you got to pay for what you all did to my child. Ms. Diane, yes. you said you have proof. Yes, I do. Is that video evidence? What kind yes, of proof do you is. have? Yes, it is. Video. Where did you get the video? What does it show? Do it matter? I got it. What does it show? It showed them killing my son. Are there any? It inmates? showed, yes. He did not hang himself. How old we got he? pictures. My son was 28 years old. Would have been 29. February 13th. Where are you all from? We're originally from the Delta, but we live in New Orleans, Mississippi. Did the chaplain say why he wanted to speak to your 11 year old son? I guess that's the first person he looked at on the application, and it was a visitation form. You never looked to see was he a kid or nothing. He's 11 years old. How long has he been dead? My son? About 19 months. Um, robbery was his charge. And what time, how long was he supposed to serve? I don't know. He hadn't went back to court on it. He broke his probation and he had to go back. So that's still, my story. And I want everybody to know it's not okay to take a life. You're not God out here. It's not okay. 
do you feel like a lot of times, I guess, it feel like, you know, all those guys with the process through the system and just, you know, any kind of way, just done any kind of way? Do you feel, do you, did you all feel like that? Or, you know, especially the way things were going, you were trying to get in contact with this person or that person? I feel like a lot of them is down there that, as the gentleman said, could have had probation or something. Some of them crimes not that brutal. And as he stated, the prison is overpopulated. Why would you study housing people knowing you can't feed them or anything? And as you say, they asking about mattress. They don't have mattress. They have mats. They sleep on the floor with water coming out the wall, down the wall. What's your message to the leadership here at the Capitol? And it's to fight for our kids, our brothers, our sisters, everybody. It's to keep fighting. Don't give up. It's not okay. Do not give up. They have family that love them. Do you feel that MDOC is covering up many of these deaths, as you said? Yes, I do. I know they are. Yes. And like I say, the proof been shown. They are covering it up. Yes. When's the last time you spoke to your son? It was on the 16th on the 16th and they took him to protected custody they said as she said her son same thing with mine he was in a one-man cell the guard gave them the key to open the door and go in and kill my baby it's not okay y'all how did he describe the living conditions to you this just as i'm telling you the same do you is it fit for a human being to be there is it what fit, fit? for a human being to be there no not from what I have seen, no. It's not fit for animals to be there. But considering that's what they state them as, that's why they there. No, it's not fit for no one to be there. Anything else you'd like to add? Yes, I want justice as everyone else is here today. We want justice for our kids. And the state officials that's accessories to murder need to be immediately arrested. She just told you there's evidence, there's evidence. that the guards opened up the cells and allowed them to go in there and kill her son. That is accessory to murder. Somebody needs to be arrested today. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, video of your son. We have John Oliver II's family. Is it Irma and John Oliver Sr.? How many are you going to call? As many as you want to speak to. My name is Irma um, Oliver and John Oliver. We're the parents of my son John Oliver II. Um, on uh, January 1st, we got a call from, I uh, guess January 3rd, we got a call from someone inside telling that our son had been stabbed three times and been lifted to the hospital. As of yesterday, as of yesterday evening, my son finally called. But we haven't heard anything like what they were saying. We were trying to get them to tell us something about our son, an update or what's going on. They would not give us no kind of information. Uh, so, um, so, and he finally called us and he told us, he said, Mama, they, they operate on me. And he felt everything. He did it. The pain was so just, so just, 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 so he did that they passed, he passed out his lung was punctured, and, and he said that it was, it was just so, he just couldn't believe the pain that he was having when they were operating on him, and so they just released him not the other day from the hospital, for back into the population, with a drainage still in him. I mean, who does folks like that? And I mean, right today, I mean, I, I, you know, and then, and then after all of that, my son didn't even supposed to be there anyway. The judge, Roger, Roger Chamberlain, sent to him for armed robbery, with it was like a theft. Of a cell phone. My son, my son got seven years for cell phone theft. Mandatory. He called it armed robbery of a cell phone. Seven years, day for day. Is what my son John Oliver has. Excuse me. He's been in prison five years now on a cell phone. That's ridiculous. They've been fighting. You put a child in jail for seven years for some nonsense like this. This justice system is, is corrupt. It's awful what they're doing to our young people. 
and it's not black or white, it's people in general. They're selling our people to the jail system, what I think. It seems like you just you just open sales right now. We're gonna admit so many people, we're gonna send them to jail. This is ridiculous what they're doing to our people, young people. My son is 24 years old, oh, he's been in jail five years now for a darn cell phone. I'm pissed off about it. I can't stand it. Do you feel that a prison the pipeline system, uh, do you know you hear these type of cases? You know, I guess, like you said, for something as small as a cell phone, you know, to make the money, you know, to cycle it in and out of the system. Do you feel that a lot of time? I feel as though they were upset because we didn't, we, didn't, we didn't fall into the trap of spending money to keep my son to pay to keep him in and out of jail. My son had, had problems. He did. He was, he, was, he was addicted to Xanax before he went to jail. We put him in Team Challenge to get our son help. He, he, he kicked his habit. And Judge Chamberlain, with himself, he thought it was a joke. We had had a Olive Branch High School was in the court that day my son was, was, um, was tried, and he gave my son seven darn years for a cell phone theft. Who put someone in jail for seven years for a cell phone? In Memphis, that would have been a misdemeanor. Not seven darn years in jail. Seven years? Come on now. Come on, y'all think about that. Seven years? You don't do no one like that. This boy been in jail for seven years for a darn cell phone. And he been fighting for his life man. ever since he went to park. They sent him to park him down in their heart with these people. I mean, they jumped him, folks jumped him. Why? Well, first soon he got there. Because they said there wasn't no stretch on him, so they put him in a hole. So, you know, it, 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 what, what justice? I mean, what, 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 what justice? It's not no justice. And it's right, just us. It's it just, it, it just right now that here it is now. If they didn't take care of him, I su uh, secured him, and now they don't put him out in the population, he got a uh, drainage still in there. Now I'm worried about the take of, of infection, uh, anything, all, all of that going on. And then like it got something had to be happening now. I know lawsuits take a long time or whatever the case may be, but some need to be, just need to be taken now. If you, I do, mean, if you do five years of a seven year sentence already, and like, like our lawyer was just saying, you would think you'd be thinking about paroling some of these individuals that have done 75, 80% of the time already. You should be thinking about letting these people go. You're talking about the prisons overcrowded. Well, hell, you got people in there that have do, done five of a seven year bed already. Let these people out. Send my son home, send others home that have done their time. And you, but they got this day for day nonsense in the court system in Mississippi, and we, which is outraged what they're doing to these young people. And all, and most of them in jail nine days are 18 to 35. You ain't, my old self, 55, you ain't seen us. They don't want me, they want the youngsters. They want to kill what you what you bring up. They want to kill that seed, that seed song for the young people. You want to kill that young seed. That's what Star says, y'all. Come on now, wake up and see this. And the governor has the authority to grant pardons. The governor is the only individual in this state that has the authority singular the singular authority to grant pardons of clemency the governor tate reeves if you're listening you need to do something you have been elected to represent all of the people of mississippi get from behind that desk and get to work grant some pardons grant some uh, clemency do what Haley Barber did. He he did it right before he left office. You can do it at the start of your term. You are in the midst of a crisis. Your first crisis as governor. Get to work. Come up with a solution. You are governor, and we are looking for you to lead. That's right. That's Come right. up with a solution. Do something. Is your son getting a proper antibiotic for his system? I mean, that's, we that's, don't. I mean, no. He told us he had to go try to find someone to get some pain for that. I'm hurt. I'm hurt right now. They ain't gave me nothing for the pain, Bob. I'm hurt. Now what's you mad your son tell you you're hurting your daddy, you can't do it no for him. What's your son's name and where you My from? son's name is John Ed Oliver. This like, he's well, dead, you, not for me, he's dead. South Southside, the Mississippi, South Southside. Does this explain why they didn't sedate his son? They didn't even tell us he was we, down. We have yet to speak to uh, the this warden, been the warden down there. When I called her, she she got me off the phone. The one down, he, my son was in Bolivar County. That's where we got, that's where we got to stay out there, down in Cleveland. He moved, they moved him from Bolivar, then they sent him back down to the hospital in Greenwood. And as soon as they got through, they got him well enough, they brought, brought him back to Parchment, and he's been in Parchment, the hospital in Parchment. And as soon as they got him stitched up well enough, they put him back in population. Now he had a drainage tube hanging out of the chest right now, and he's saying, Dad, I'm hurting all the time. They give me enough of the pain. How many days was that prior to him right after being, you know, stitched up? I'm, I'm he was down there a week. He was in, he was in Greenwood a week. No, just one, one day. They just did the Wednesday, uh, he said then the Wednesday evening just up this week. And then it was right back out when? And it was, they sent him straight to the population after they well, he was in the hospital in, in Parchment. 
about two or three days. So he was stabbed he, last week? No, well, he was stabbed on the The lieutenant governor is over there. Is there anything you want to say? Uh, the lieutenant governor just passed. Oh, is there lieutenant a Governor Hoseman, can you find uh, you MDOC? Is he leaving? Yeah, he's leaving. Yeah, he's trying to get work now. He ain't left trouble no um, continue to pray for the Oliver family. Um, they are suffering and hurting, as you can see. But I mean, parole, clemency, pardon, or something. He's already served uh, five or seven years, uh, and his health uh, is, is of uh, paramount concern. Health and safety. Uh, Sylvia Peterson. All right, Kanisha Dickerson on behalf of Curtis Peterson, and, you, and state your name. Did you step up for us? Step up for Can you say your first and last name? Oh, all right, let us know when you're ready. I'm ready. All right, can you spell, spell your first and last name for us? Kanisha, K-A-N-E-S-H-A Dickerson. Okay, who are you, you speaking for? I am speaking for my brother, Derek Curtis Peterson. He has been incarcerated for over 10 years. Um, he was sentenced to 20 years for armed robbery, robbery, robbery I'm sorry, um, $141 allegedly, which he's maintained his innocence. Um, my brother, um, my brother does not deserve to be in there. He has served over 10 years of his time. We, um, my mother has lost a child. want to lose another child in this manner. Um, he is hurt. His uh, his foot, he broke his foot and he's been trying to his best to not tell us all the gruesome things that everybody else has been telling us. But we know and he's been trying to keep it from my mom because she's already still grieving. But we found out um, that he's hurt and he's not getting proper treatment for his foot. Um, he's limping and um, he's not telling us everything that's going on. We need him to be released. He served over half of his sentence. We need him to come home before he ends up being another victim. And I, my condolences go out to those who've already lost their, their son. We do not want this to happen. We do, I do not want to lose another sibling. Derek Peterson needs to be released. What happened to your brother's foot? Right. He's not telling me how it happened. He just said he made up something about he jumped the wrong way, but I know that he's lying. He doesn't want me to tell my mom. My mom has been going through a lot since my sister died. He does not want to break her that way. He wrote so about the infection. He, like he, he said something about it was tingling, and I'm a nurse, so he said something about it was tingling and uh, throbbing and stuff, and they're not, he did say that they're not doing what they're he knows they're not doing what they're supposed to do with it and i'm just afraid that he's gonna throw a plot he's not taking anything to thin his blood out um he hasn't probably just got it recast or anything mm -hmm. with especially with everything else that's going on i'm really worried about his health right now and i can't be there for him and i don't want to lose another sibling and they really need to do something now this is a national emergency did you ever think Mississippi would gotten out? You would have gotten out of control this series with the prison system. No, I, I, I had no idea it was this bad. It's like slavery conditions in there, and we are so beyond that right now. You would think it's horrible to know that he's living like that, and and he tried his best not to let us know. But once everything got out, we knew the truth about what was going on, and my heart just hurts for him because, you know, he's lost a sibling as well. He's dealing with that and. He's also dealing with people dying around him, people living in squalor. He's dealing with all of that. These are humans with emotions and feelings, and you can't do that to them. That breaks them down. And they talk about gang violence. Well, what makes a gang? You break them down to where they have nothing constructive. My brother has earned degrees in, in prison. He is able to come out into society to be a productive citizen. That's what prison was for. He's done that. So let him do that. He has a carpentry degree. He has um, lots of, he has gotten his GED in there. I mean, the things that he was supposed to do, he did it. He went in young, he, he matured, he got his stuff together. Why are you still holding him accountable for 
things that were done 10 years ago. How old and is he? He is 30, 36. 36. And he is ready. My, my, my father has a construction business. He's ready to, to be a productive citizen. And you're, pun you're still punishing him. That's not fair. You're punishing people that are ready to make a difference, to right their wrongs. Let those people out on the road. That's not fair. That's not right life. That's, that's not any God life. And what town are you from? I, I live in Brandon. Um, we're, I'm from, originally from Jackson. We grew up in Jackson. And my, I just yeah, know that he needs to come home because I'm so broke. Yeah, I have not heard from him. I don't know what's going on. We have not heard from him at all. He needs to come home. He's still alive, which we don't know. might be one of the people that's waking up every day that it happens. We don't know if that's him or not. And it's he needs to come home because he's been his time over 10 years. That's a long time. That's a long time. 441 dollars. $141, and he be still denies he did it. So he said not him. Great possibility and he didn't do it. And he's been accused of that and he's been there all for 10 years. I put money into lawyers and everything. Something always happens where he it just never works out for him to come out. And can we have your name? I'm Carolyn Peterson, his mom. And like I said, I lost my daughter a year and a half ago. I just don't want my son. I wouldn't make it this time. We're going to end with this. Uh, most of you have seen recently Just Mercy and Brian Stevenson. Brian Stevenson has been fighting on behalf of individuals that have been on death row, nothing less than death row. Uh, and some individuals, um, despite the evidence that, uh, that they were innocent, were put to death. And then some, Brian has been able to get off of death row, fighting six, 10 years for their freedom. So we know that the criminal justice system is flawed. And so just because someone is locked up and incarcerated does not mean they're guilty. I mean, despite the evidence, uh, a lot of the times they are still convicted and they are still uh, placed in prison. Some are placed on death row. And so we need uh, to severely ramp uh, the criminal justice system in Mississippi and across America. Uh, $141 and you have a sentence of about 20 years and you've already served 10 years and now you injured or uh, ill and the state still won't let you go home. Uh, it's really pathetic. We need to have some pretrial diversion. Some of these people should have never been incarcerated in the first place. $141, I'm a municipal court judge. I would have sentenced him to less than 30 days in jail. I mean, you go to prison for $141, a cell phone, seven years for a cell phone. This is present day slavery. As Brian Stevenson says, slavery did not leave, it just evolved. Now we have open incarceration. You're putting away black and brown young men and women for petty crimes. Petty crimes and misdemeanors, they have been charged as felons and convicted and placed behind bars to live in squalor uh, and live worse or as bad as slaves did back in the day. And so it's time for it to end. Uh, we call on the Mississippians of goodwill to unite together and call on our leaders in government and the executive and legislative branches to do the right thing. Thank you for coming to continue to keep these families in your prayers and thoughts. Thank you. Okay, let's take a picture.